Have you ever been in a violent storm in the midst of it going on around you? Thunder, lightning, rain going sideways, winds out of control. Have you ever been in one of these storms in an airplane? In the air? Yes. <clears throat> Scary. I remember the day I left South Africa. And I boarded the plane. The weather was terrible that day. And as the plane took off, the winds were blowing and the thunder and the lightning and the pilot kept saying things were going to be okay. But when I looked around, people were gripping the seats and holding their stomach and in prayer. And I kept saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And we were flying, and, and we were being tossed around like a ball. Fellow Toastmasters, Toastmaster, welcome guests. This is life. And suddenly, as we were climbing and climbing, we broke through the clouds, and there was the most beautiful blue sky. And the sun, the morning sun, was absolutely stunning. It had been there all the time, but we couldn't see it in the midst of the storm. That has been what the last few years of my life has been like, is going through this storm. Four years ago, after moving to Detroit, I chose to go to, to get, you know, moving down here to get a new doctor and dentist and all that. And so I went to the, my doctor to, just to get a physical. And she asked me, she said, do you have any complaints? I said, well, I have this nagging pain in my back, right between my shoulders. I've had it for a really long time. You know, I'm in physical therapy. They tell me it's because of my shoulder. Years too long. She asked me to look at it. I showed her and she said, I want you to go get an MRI. Have you ever had one? No. She said, okay. And I said, all right, I'll set up an appointment. No, she said, no, I, I want you to have an MRI now. I want you to go here directly to the hospital and have an MRI. So I went, had the MRI. And it's never a good thing when the technician says, don't get up quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do this now with Di. <laughs> and then he come back after that test and he said, don't get up yet. I need to call your doctor. And I'm laying there and I'm laying there and then pretty soon some people come in and they helped me up. And they said, we have your doctor on the phone. We would like you to talk to her. So I go into an office and I sit down and she says, Debbie, there is a mass in your spine. It's wrapped itself around your spinal cord and we have to hospitalize you because if someone were to hug you, your spine would collapse. I'm like, well, I was on my way to work. And she's like, no, you're not going anywhere. They admitted me. They began uh, steroid treatments, uh, Dracocon steroids. I call it the dragon steroid for really good reasons. And I was there for nine days. They did a biopsy. They couldn't tell what the mass was. It was kind of like a chameleon. It kept changing names. And it was in a very, very bad spot to get at. They decided they would radiate it. Well, the radiation destroyed one of my vertebrae, but it didn't bother the tumor any. <laughs> they released me from the hospital, and they made a small error in my prescriptions. They wrote my pill steroid prescription for three times the dose. I didn't know that. I never took this stuff. During the next couple of weeks, I got to sleep four hours a day. I blew up like a balloon. I went from Deb Loops to Meryl Street to Campbell Soup Kid. Or <laughs> 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 
I was not feeling good. <laughs> I also developed a severe myopathy where I, from my solar plexus on down, so like walking, climbing upstairs, going downstairs, maintaining your balance was a very big struggle. When the doctor realized that they had wrote the prescription wrong, he had to taper me down. And he said it would take over a couple of weeks. I just wanted to be off it. The taper was of the appropriate um, pace for my body, but internally I couldn't stand the side effects. And I blew an artery in my small intestine and lost 70% of my blood. I ended up spending two weeks in ICU, and some of my close friends who came to see me, um, I don't think even recognized me. And during that time, most people who are in intensive care, they sleep a lot. Not me, I'm full of steroids, I'm wide awake all around the clock. I was out of work five months, recovering from the steroids. The tumor was still very happy. In 2011, after three hospital institutions, 13 MRIs, six PET scans, uh, numerous tumor boards, 13 surgeons of somebody, can you get this thing out of my body, where the first hospital, Henry Ford, had told me they gave me three months to live. Finally, I went to U of M, and I met a man named Dr. Frank Lamarca. And he said, Deb, I do this stuff every day. I can take care of this. So you're gonna need two surgeries, one on the back, and we're going to take out, he said the tumor is on the front side of the spinal column, that's, what, that's why it's such a problem. He said, then, a week later, we're going to go in the front, we're going to open up your chest, we're going to take out the front, we're going to build new vertebrae, so we put some spacers in, and we're actually taller today. And he said, and then we're going to put a cage here and fusion here, and you're going to be like planet of one, okay? But you are going to walk out of this hospital the way you walked in. So I did, and he saved my life. It took almost a year recovery, but I am here today. Thank you.